Hi, my name is Kumargana and welcome back to the Sims 4 Ultimate Decade Challenge. This is year 1380 and it's a pretty exciting year because, well, first off, Grogo, that's, whoa, whoa, I flashed all the way back. <laughs> Stephen is getting married. In fact, he is consummating said marriage right now. So let's get a look at his future partner. Um, I want to get them married, but I actually forgot to get them engaged in the previous episode. So um, according to medieval law, anyways, as soon as you woohoo or, you know, do the dirty, you're considered married anyways. So um, obviously I'm not doing that in my gameplay, but for the sake of this exact moment, I'm going to let it slide and then they'll be officially married at some other point. But I'm going to still move her in and everything. I'm going to just let them do this for now. All right, so let me give these guys some privacy. Mary has made a delicious feast. I want I want I don't want to give them too much privacy cuz I don't want her to leave. But I'm actually super excited to see her added to this family and I believe she's a spellcaster. I don't think he knows that quite yet, but I'm pretty sure she is. I don't think I'm going to change her name or anything like that, but cuz her name is Taylor. Yes, Taylor Bard. There we go. Oh, I'm actually, I'm actually pretty excited for this one. All right, welcome to the family, Taylor. I hope you're pregnant, Aunt. So let's add her to the family. It's not the typical way we would do something like this, but it's gonna have to work for now. And there's rules about adding people to the family. My Sims don't get married that often, but let's see, 2,500 simoleons. So let me add 2,500. Boom, money in my pocket. Now, I don't know if she's pregnant or not, but I hope she is, but this is her. So I guess we'll take this moment to get to know her. So she's Taylor Bard and I was right, she is a spellcaster. We know her father technically, Vivian Bard. We didn't really get to know too much of him, but he was actually in the running to potentially marry Marjorie way back in the day. He was one of the spellcasters, uh, but I believe the game said he was gay, so he wasn't going to get with uh get with marjorie but clearly that's not the case he fell in love later on so i guess he realized he was bisexual fell in love with a woman had a beautiful little family so we have taylor who we're married no who are we married to oh they're both named taylor okay so i will be changing her name actually <laughs> that's gonna get a little bit confusing if her sister ever comes around but taylor has a twin sister named taylor apparently and an older sister whose name i forgot to look at so this is her. So what are these possible genetics we can get? I see some sharp teeth. So potentially some fey blood from somewhere. She's got these gorgeous blue eyes and she's got this mole and freckles and uh, and she has Afro textured hair. So her hair is in braids at the moment, but I'm super excited. Let's check these traits. She's an animal whisperer. I had to make sure I was still recording. She's an animal whisperer. She's encouraging. She's outgoing and a freegan. Um, if that freaking trait gets too annoying, I'm just going to take it out because we don't really need it. And it's not allowed, actually. Um, she's not really good at singing. She's straight. She's very charismatic. She knows the cult exists because she's a spellcaster. She's scientific minded, so she's pretty logical. I think she'll get along with Agnes pretty well, hopefully. And she has the gesture and caregiver traits. And oh, she can't dance also. Apparently, she's phobic. So, um, a homophobic witch who is very charismatic and can pretty easily get people on her side is married to a gay man. Oh, what a match. What a match. What a match. That can be pretty dangerous. If he had more of a, I guess, a wife who, not quieter, but a bit shyer and just didn't care, or at least didn't care, then... It might not have been dangerous, but she could easily cause if he upsets her. I don't know. I think I don't think she's the type to completely back down like how Mary was. She can she's an animal whisperer, so I'm going to take this as a she can use her magic to communicate with through animals. So we might have to watch out for that. I don't know. This could go very good or very bad for now. Neither one of them are in love with each other. This is purely transactional. 
and it increases their bloodline. She has a weak bloodline, but he has a strong one. So they're most likely gonna, if they don't have hybrid children, they're most likely going to have a bunch of really powerful spellcaster babies, which makes me really excited. So maybe we should, oh, I need to give her more of a makeover. I only did certain outfits because I didn't know who we were gonna get with. Okay. Get engaged to Stephen. I'm working on it. I'm working on it. So y'all will get engaged soon-ish in this episode, probably. I'm probably going to get that all wrapped up. But in the meantime, Mary has prepared a delicious feast. So we're going to call literally everyone to meal. People were eating eggs, but I'm going to need them to eat eggs. Agnes is at work. Taylor just realized her husband is a spellcaster. Hopefully she's pregnant. So you might say, say, you might realize that we're running out of room here in the house because everyone's still here. Obviously, once Agnes and Alberta move out, we can turn this into a kid's room. But um, for now, Agnes can leave whenever. I guess she, she's still 13. So I, I'll give her a couple more years here. And well, she's 14 now. And then Al, and Alberta still isn't even 13 yet. So she'll be here for a while. As for Annabelle, I think she's going to stick by and, and I mean, this is her husband's house first. So <laughs> I think she's going to stay for now. She's a big help. And Mary, Mary's going to stick around mostly because she's not too, too close with her daughters enough to go move in with them and help out with their kids. I would love her to be, but that's just unfortunate reality of their situation. And... Honestly, I, I did the roll for her how many days she has. I like to do it off screen so I can um, make it a bit of, of a surprise in the video. So I know when she's going to pass away. Y'all don't know when she's going to pass away. <laughs> but um, I'll say this. She doesn't have too, too much longer. So it's not a hassle to keep her in the household with us. I'll give her that. So I want to spend these last few days comfortably with Mary. We, we've seen her since she was a child. So I'm... I don't know. I'm I'm nostalgic. We've known Mary since she was a child, like get forcefully engaged or an arranged marriage to, to Amir and just a rough marriage after that. And then her situation with the kids wasn't any better, to be honest. But oh, it's such a nice cold snowy day. Um, society requires schools for success, yes. So since she's an animal whisperer, by now I mean Taylor, who I guess we could find her a new name because I need to give her a makeover anyways. I'll do that off screen, but uh, Taylor isn't really, it's, it's kind of taking me out the out of my medievalness. It probably is a medieval name, but it's not on my list. So I'm going to pick a new name for her right now. I feel like I spun the wrong wheel. Nope, this is the right wheel. Um, Lucia. Oh, I like that name. I feel like that's a good witch name. Her name is Lucia, actually. So I'll change that whenever I give her a thing sir aaron harrington okay so news has reached the harrington family that he is officially wed and he has started a relationship with the woman so hopefully this gets um steven off his back and stop being so pushy you could at least stay here and oh wait are you no no you are not a llama scout <laughs> we are not doing that let's see yeah her and mary get along well so Thankfully, Mary has a good granddaughter-in-law to kind of help out around the farm a lot more as well. And I'm super interested in seeing what their potential future children will look like because they're both absolutely gorgeous. And I just have the highest hopes. I don't know if I should get them a pet or anything like that. I don't know how many kids they're going to have together. So I don't want to muddle the household with a bunch of animals, you know, maybe a horse or two because Annabelle likes horses. And they have the, the funds for it now. Well, also, um, Annabelle lives in this room now. I got this from the gallery. I'm so sorry. I actually don't remember who I got it from. <laughs> I I should have note, noted that down. But I don't remember who exactly I got this from. I just went on the gallery and looked at medieval bedrooms. Um, took out some stuff, added in a bed and this thing. And that's it. So she stays here out in the corner, which is fine. I think she needed to give family some space anyways so for now until mary passes away then i'll move stephen and lucia into this room but for now they're gonna stay in here um 
in case they have children and uh <laughs> we'll move we'll move from there and what's what's the eye color of the day girl um pink with the back background okay good enough for me i wonder how taylor feels about the hybridism of the family because we know emma is pretty anti-hybrid i wonder if she's fine with it and how she feels about the fact that her husband and children her husband is a hybrid her in-laws are hybrids and she might potentially have hybrid children i don't know taylor discovered that alberta is an alien not even trying to hide oh she's just now discovering that that's right okay so for now she seems to be taking it pretty well she's thinking about sex apparently i mean you could do it again if you want i'm not going to stop you but okay, she seems to be handling it pretty well okay yeah, she's handling it much better than Emma. Emma did not even want to look at Annabelle when she was a hybrid. <laughs> Granted, her daughter-in-law is a hybrid. I think she just doesn't like magical hybrids, but... Okay. So, Agnes, I know you're not in the mood. And this is probably a terrible idea, but it's probably... Um, you should probably greet your future sister... Your new sister-in-law, I guess. Don't do all that. Don't gossip with her. Just, uh, be normal. Get to know her. Build a snow pile. Okay, you can relax and build a snow pile. What? Mary and Albretta have a strict family dynamic? Oh, Mary, don't be hard on her too. She already has to deal with her mom. I could see her being a little bit strict. She's in her older years now. Um, I guess she's worried about Albretta's future. Because Stephen now has his, like, his wife to keep him in line. Or at least she's hoping that she keeps him in line. And Agnes is just already pretty self-sufficient. But Alberta, she doesn't know where Alberta's going to go or how she's going to be. And Mary might not be in lo around long for Mary as she gets older. What? <laughs> Mary might not be around long for Alberta as she gets older. So I think now she's being a little bit strict in her final years because she's, I think this is a strict worry and less of a strict I hate you, but it's still strict. So I could see it like she's trying to get her to be responsible and all that and let her know that she has to handle things in life and whatnot. And I don't know. Hopefully things work out for her. Annabelle could not be bothered. She's going to go cross stitch, but Agnes is going to come meet her in-law. Stephen went off to work okay so I'm not gonna have Taylor do too too much I'm just gonna have her get settled into the household and since Agnes is a little older and Taylor's like the new woman of the house I guess besides Annabelle but I'm gonna say Taylor because she's Stephen's wife now and Stephen is technically the head of the house because he's uh the only male but I think she's gonna start learning uh, Mary's recipes and cooking because when Mary goes It'll probably be Taylor who takes over the cooking for the family. Taylor or Annabelle. They'll probably work it out. Yeah, Annabelle's missing having horses, so... I don't know. Maybe we should get, get an extra horse. But let me handle some of the chores. Sure. Let me handle some of the chores, and I'll be back. Ari just invited Agnes to test their magic. Hmm... Hmm. I don't think we should go to the magic realm per se, but I wouldn't mind Ari teaching these guys the ropes about their magic, right? I think it'd be a good idea for Ari and or Thomas, you know, Emma's family to assist these hybrids with their with their magic. So it's interesting that Ari's reaching out to Agnes instead of Stephen, but I guess he's just trying to get in good with the fam. They already like him, so we'll probably be seeing more. I wonder how he feels about uh, Lucia now that she's moved in and married to Stephen. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Um, Agnes and Lucia are having some odds. It might be Agnes's fault because she gets pretty enraged easily nowadays. nowadays. She probably just got annoyed. Not an excuse, but that's most likely what happened. She was probably sitting in here trying to relax and get away from people. In between her sister talking her air off and then Taylor. Nope, Lucia came in. 
probably just a lot for her. Alien deception. So, oh, okay. They're not getting along at all. What is happening? Okay. So she doesn't mind the fact that Albretta is an alien. She doesn't even mind the fact that Stephen's an alien. But something about Agnes is setting her off. Taylor's discovered... Lucy has discovered that Agnes Smith is an alien, not even trying to hide it. You were cool with it when it was Albretta. Is it because she was a kid? They're, the, they're all the same alien. They have the same blood. <laughs> they're all hybrids. Why are you mad? What did... What happened? I left, I, I walked away for a second. Well, I didn't walk away. I scrolled away for a second. Jesus. Okay. Um, presume large hoop Yamachan. I think, I think everyone should just go to bed. Clearly tensions are pretty high. Everyone should just head to bed. I hear it. I hear it. Why did you, why do you keep waking up to get kidnapped, Mary? Is this how you want to go out? Amongst your people. Literally, why do you keep waking up, putting on your clothes to walk outside? This is time number eight. I think you've gotten kidnapped in total. Why do you, what, what's going on? You, you want to talk, girl? What's going on? Wait, they're both getting taken? Wait, I, I paused for a, they both just, both of them? Both of them? I've never had, <laughs> I've never had um, two Sims. Are you about to make it a third, Steven? It, you just, did you feel that? Don't say you're about to, okay, you're just gonna go outside and destroy your sister's snow pile. Okay. Um, your mom and grandmother just both simultaneously got kidnapped by aliens. Uh, Taylor got a fear of cheating. Oh, oh, that's, um, uh, that's. What a fear for you to get in considering your circumstances that you're in currently with your husband who you don't know is gay. Hmm. Become friends with Albretta. Yeah, she likes Albretta. Does not like Agnes. Why is everybody awake at two in the morning? What is happening? What's going on? Oh, guess who's back? They both just, and they're carrying on like nothing happened. It doesn't, like she gets kidnapped so much that she's not even phased. She just feels confident. What's going up there? What's going on up there in that UFO girl? Asleep. Okay, well. Abducted again from reoccurring events. <laughs> um, but for this to happen several times, what are the odds? Yeah, you get abducted like once an episode, sister. Like once a year, you get you get took. He is so unhappy with this. He's throwing a tantrum at the fact he had to get married. I've got some bad news for you, brother. I don't think your wife is pregnant, so you're going to do the most uncomfortable thing for you to ever do, which is uh, sleep with your wife. I'm not sure what happened, but I think something in my settings got changed with the latest update because the option to like. I, I could give her a promise ring, but I couldn't become engaged. Actually, that might be something that happened with life and love and love and life. What, what was the last one? Love, the love pack. Look at this nice little family dinner. It's 12th night. It's the next day. And Annabelle, you're ruining my, why? Why? But it's 12th night. Everyone's back after worshiping the watcher and just enjoying a nice little meal. Mary is busting at Steven, I guess. It seems that, um, God, what's her name? Lucia is sticking rather close to Mary. I'm surprised she and Agnes are sitting directly next to each other, considering that they are not getting off on the right foot. Interesting. And there goes Grim through the window. That's not terrifying. Where are you going? Are you going to my chickens? My chickens are always dying. Oh, Morgan's here. So I don't know if y'all remember. I don't know who this guy is. Oh, their neighbor. Bernard. Oh, Bernard got old. Okay. So Morgan is one of their cousins who the game doesn't think is their cousin anymore. One of, um, uh, what's Agnes's niece name? Not Agnes. Jesus. What is Mary's niece name? Victoria? One of Victoria's kids. And one of the girls who I kind of wanted, um, 
who I kind of wanted Stefan to possibly marry, but y'all see this in the next episode, which is actually the side household update. She is actually married to a slack. So at the end of the episode where a slack turned to a teenager, I think that next year he and Morgan got hit. So I guess me saying that he was going to end up with a MILF was incorrect. The first first myth to prove me wrong out of all, I don't know how many boys he had, five? First myth to prove me wrong out of all like five of them. So congratulations as a slack for marrying within your age range and not becoming a baby daddy, hopefully. So um, she's here to visit. I guess she hasn't seen her cousins in a while. Wasn't she really close with Alberta back in the day? Yeah. This is your girl. You and Alberta hadn't hung out in a while. They also have a child. So we'll see their kid that she and a slack had in the next episode when I do the side household update. Marjorie has spread some gossip about Alberta. And how does she find out that gossip? All the way in Winnenberg? Anyways, since Ali came up with the an interesting idea to work on his magic with with uh agnes i'm gonna take this as him wanting to talk to her and get to know her a little bit better especially since stefan is busy with his actual duties now that he he does them and he's recently married so i think ali is just trying to get a feel for what's going on without actually going over there there's a lot of magic and weirdness going around. And I think that Lucia is a is a good person, but Stephen is is not. I I don't think Stephen is the best person, right? And I think that could be very dangerous for him because I don't see Lucia as being the type to just sit around and let him be that bad of a person. If he gets caught doing anything that she feels disrespects her or something like that and she wants to get some form of revenge she is charismatic enough to bring people to her side i think the only person who kind of sees through that is agnes i don't think agnes sees through it like as in like lucia is not pretending to be something she's not but i think that agnes kind of sees how this could go badly for her brother and as much as stephen annoys her she does not want him to be in a situation like that because she knows he's going to get himself into trouble and is i think she's just on guard about lucia for now but that's for later she and ali are going to have a chat i guess they're just going to talk he's probably a bit interested in why he wants to practice her practice magic with her and not her brother who is his best friend like they rarely talked growing up and everything so i don't know but i'm gonna let them chill and then i think off to a bad start already what is <laughs> okay i guess he didn't like that she was trying to get to know him um i'm gonna have them chill for a bit i don't think these two are gonna be friends but I'm going to say allies. I'm not going to say that he's against. He's not against Lucia. He doesn't know her. But I think he's just uh, trying to get a feel as to what Stephen's up to and how he's doing and everything. So. Duel for knowledge, I guess. Let's do a friendly duel and then we'll worry about the, the rest later. This is her first time she's even practicing her magic ever. Even Agnes. You are Agnes. Even Annabelle has it. Oh, doing it out in the open like this is a move for sure. I thought you were going to go to the back. Oh, I haven't watched a magic duel in a while. Okay. I wonder who's going to win. I feel like Ali would win, but I wonder if Agnes is magically gifted. She is gifted, quote unquote, because she's autistic. But <laughs> I wonder if we could make that into a magically gifted type of thing. And here... <laughs> Her cousins are just playing the fiddle in the background. I wish that the epic fight music continued the whole time. She is not gifted. Okay. Okay. She she won absolutely no knowledge, but and she's pissed. Okay, this man is absolutely rocking out on the <laughs> Okay, so she just got her self tossed to the ground. Um I wonder if she's going to use this as an opportunity to secretly learn to build her magic. 
right? She wants to get stronger. And like we said earlier, she doesn't like things being held. Well, the, earlier as in the previous episode, she doesn't really like when things are being held over her head. She likes to be able to take care of herself. So she and Ali are not necessarily friends at the moment, but I can see them being dueling partners and exchanging information that they feel is necessary to protect Stephen for now. So they are reluctant allies at best at the moment. And I think that's where it's going to end. She, I don't think she wants to practice her magic in front of her family, mostly because of Lucia. She doesn't, Lucia has already kind of been shown. She can sense that they have magic, but I don't think that she knows that they know that they have magic or and are hybrids. She seemed pretty surprised to see that they were aliens. So I think, don't think Agnes necessarily trusts Lucia enough to start practicing this in front of them or her mother or anything like that. So I think she'll be coming over to Ali's place to practice in secret. So let's head to the back. And there we go. Did you walk through their house? Did you? <laughs> let's head to the back and let's have you practice your magic back here. She doesn't have a or anything like that she's never been to the magic realm but i don't know i don't think she feels comfortable going with anyone mm. oh my gosh which branch should she go for she's a very practical person or should she go untamed i feel like considering who her bloodline is with a mirror she would be good at untamed but i feel like personality wise she would be practical let me look at the spell book again. I, hmm. That's not what I wanted to do. <laughs> spell book is through here. Um, magic. Open spell book. Okay. So it's between. Oh, she could also. I don't think she can get away with making potions at the house, but she could potentially get away with making some potions at her aunt's house because her aunt is married to a family of spellcasters. So let's see, practical magic, repair, scrub, delicioso, flowers. Okay, all of these could be like business-wise. She could also learn both. She doesn't have to stick with one branch, to be fair. Um, she could do whatever she wants. Inferni, Zip Zap, Necrocall, Chilio, Minionize, Dedeathify. I think she would learn some untamed magic for safety, but would practice practical magic for practical purposes. So... I wonder if she can learn her first spell, which will also make her, at the moment, the most, not powerful, I'm not sure which one of these guys is more powerful than the other, right? Or at least more talented and gifted in that sense. We know that she's gifted. She's an, a great businesswoman, but I wonder if she has magical gifts as well. Who, who knows? Because Albreda could be stronger than her. Stephen could be stronger than her. But for now, she's the only one practicing said magic. Okay, so I don't think she necessarily learned any spells during her training that she did today. But she did get some perks. So, oh my gosh, I haven't played with spellcasters um, on screen in a while. Let's see. Knowledge is magic. Does computer research. Well, I, computers don't exist, but I do think she'd be good at that. Potion crafting speed. Hmm. She is a businesswoman, so what if she did start making potions in secret to sell? Hmm. Let me see. Discharge. Honestly, because she has um a strong bloodline, I was going to say ancient. It's not ancient. Because she has a strong bloodline, her bar doesn't even fill up that high, to be honest. So, incredible forager. Since now receive more items in the magic room. I'm going to go with experimenter and blender arm. So maybe she'll work on potions in secret and uh, at Thomas's house and then work on her actual magic between Ali. And maybe she can convince Emma or Thomas to assist her with her magic. Who knows? Become disliked by Taylor. What a goal. Y'all, I almost completely forgot this was actually a uh, a major day because we had a major event going on. <laughs> well, it won't really affect the family too, too much because we're rich now, but it's 1380. So this is actually the poll tax year, 
meaning I have to, my main household has to lose 5,000 simoleons. So, let me see, 79, so 74, 3, 4, 7. There we go. Minus 5,000. Honestly, because Mary made such a good decision with selling the previous home and rebuilding something smaller and living way beneath their means, they're able to afford that and can easily make it up if they have, especially if they have Alice working the table. But if they just work the table for a bit, they can easily make that back. But had they stuck to what Denise wanted to do, that would have if they even had that much at this point, because I think they would have gone bankrupt like a couple of taxes ago, but that would have absolutely just completely destroyed them. So as much as I felt for Denise and that her way of life was just stripped away from her almost overnight, I, Mary made the right call with that one. Of course, she had no clue that the poll tax was coming or anything like that. She was just thinking about the then and there, they wasn't even going to be able to pay their taxes, much less poet tax, which would have led to a lot more issues. I just realized I never actually saw what she thought about um, Stephen. They're not actually soulmates. This is the Sim soulmates where they, when two Sims have high romantic thing, this isn't the soulmate mod. Um, they're promised. So she thinks that Stephen is charmless and very unattractive. Oh, wow. What a... What a match this is. And he thinks nothing about her because, well, she's not his type. It's the next day and the whole family is just out here on this nice winter fest day, enjoying a nice breakfast of flower salad. Um, what? Play in the rain. Okay. Do what you wish. There's nothing wrong with that. Agnes is the last to get up considering she was up all night practicing her magic in secret. In which we're also going to go visit Thomas. I want to see if she can learn a couple potions. I'm hoping she doesn't give herself a curse as well. Oh, Lucia wants to become enemies with Agnes. What's with, what's with this? I thought they would kind of get over this. Agnes doesn't want to become her enemy. She just wants to become disliked by her. But what's her name? Lucia wants to become an, a legit enemy, which is concerning. Like, look at how good she gets along with literally everyone but... What, what are y'all? Okay, I thought you were going to do something together. She gets along with everyone but Agnes. I don't know. This isn't a good sign. I love Agnes and I trust her quite a bit. So the fact that Agnes doesn't trust Lucia, even though Lucia to me hasn't shown any reason to be untrustworthy, makes me not trust her. I don't know. If Agnes don't like you, neither do I. I ride with Agnes. Oh, I, for some reason I didn't get a notification or maybe I just missed it, but she is eating for two. So she'll be giving birth sometime next episode. Okay, Lucia, you're moving quick. Uh, I'm so excited. So this will be the start of Jen. <laughs> Let me see. Oh my gosh, I got to count now. I don't have to count. I have a family tree that you're not married to him yet. I need to get these guys married, but it won't let me for some reason. So, oh yeah, I forgot he, he has two family trees because uh, Mary came from a pre-made family. So one... Two, three, four, five. This is Gen 6 we're about to have. Ignore this baby. With the update, it made my ghost, my child ghost sims. It made the family tree think that my child ghost sims are still alive, even though they're not. Mostly because kids aren't supposed to die in this game anyway. So, <laughs> but I promise these they didn't come back to life or anything like that. It's just uh just a glitch. Here we go at Amisa's household. Greet your aunt Amise. That's they hugged before I press play. I promise this is just a terrible angle. Okay, good enough. I want this grim thing to go away. <laughs> it's so annoying. Um, let's not eavesdrop. No reason to do all that. Let's just head in. Probably told Aunt Amise that we're here looking for Thomas to just try to see if we can learn a bit more about this magic that's in our blood. Stop! Don't scream at your aunt. Jesus. Agnes, you're ruining the relationships around you. Don't self-sabotage. You don't deserve that. Don't do that to yourself. Okay. Okay. You're doing too much. I... Let's just have a friendly duel. Right? I'm sure Emma recognizes an anger that she can probably let out 
through dueling, through her magic or something. Like, she needs an outlet. Oh, there's Thomas as well. He seems to be having a day, so I'm gonna leave him alone. Agnes, you can't just be this angry all the time. Emma looks like she'll absolutely demolish you, bro. Unless Ali was just real, much more talented in magic than he lets on. But let's see. Emma should be stronger than you as well. But she's also an elder. That don't mean nothing, though. Not with magic, I don't think. No, it's not looking like Agnes is winning. Ooh. Yep, she's not winning. She's still got a lot to learn. Ooh. Okay, that strong bloodline helps her with some things, but she's still got to train. She's still got to train. Why are you yelling at her? She ain't do nothing. Oh, she's... <laughs> oh my god. I don't know if I press play fast enough, but literally Albretta's just sitting here, minding her own business, drinking a cup of juice, and her mom just went off on her for no reason for a second there. Annabelle, you're not a good mom. <laughs> Jesus. Wow, that water looks pretty deep. Agnes flashes back to all the scary experiences of being in the water. She would rather not experience that vast and terrifying expanse again. Um, Agnes, what did you look at that gave you a fear of water? This pond? Or this river, I suppose? Okay. Interesting. So I guess she now has a fear of water. She's feeling pretty flirty for some reason as well. Condition upswing. No, why is this man in the water? I thought this exception alert was him dying. Why did he jump in? He, literally, they never swim. This is his. This is my first. Time. Why are you trying to stop trying to play with clay? And do that at the same time. Lord, did she? Agnes got a fear of water, but she's not even the one in the water. Steve ain't got in the water. My Sims never get in the water. And she's practicing her magic. So. Okay. That was interesting and weird. Yeah, my sims never do that, so the mere fact that this man had the absolute audacity to jump in the water after all of a sudden Agnes gets a fear of, of, of water made me very nervous. Does Agnes know something I do not? Agnes, let me know right now. Don't keep it to yourself. Share it with the class. So, my game crashed, but <laughs> um, I had to replay Friday. But generally, everything is the same, but I just realized that, um, what, what name did I give you? Lucia. Lucia has an unexpected crush on someone from Willow Creek, um, who I think is about her age. Yeah, who is a little younger than her, so closer to Stephen's age, because she's older than Stephen. Closer to Stephen's age, um, who was married to a werewolf somewhere. And she has an unexpected crush on this girl, so she must have some internal and external phobia. She's got a lot to deal with, clearly, and she has a fear of being cheated on and just so much. What do you mean brown cow's unhappy? I don't even own a brown cow. The brown cow died. Okay, look at these two being cute together. Aw, that's cute. It's not in front of the child, please. I think they're both just going through things and being extra physical in order to convince themselves and each other about uh, something that's clearly not going to happen. Uh-oh. The image of um, Lucia sitting at the head of this table is it's cute, but it's kind of scary because she's so unpredictable. She's not evil or anything. She's a good person, but I feel like between her secrets that she's trying to keep herself and and everything else she's got going on mixed with the Smiths family, just everything they got going on, because something's always going on with them, is not going to end up good. I don't know. I'm worried, y'all. Even Agnes is tense. She can't hide it. She's glowing. <laughs> she can't even hide it. Oh, this is the first time I've had this pop up. Okay, Taylor's going to have her first child. She has heard a lot of, 
about other families and their dynamics, perhaps Taylor has hopes for a certain type of child. So hope for a son or boyish child, hope for a daughter or girly child, no preference, or I'm going to let fate decide. I haven't, um, this is a new portion of the mod that came with one of the more recent updates. So this is my first time seeing this. So let's let fate decide. So she's had a change of family preferences. She does not want a child. What? She does not want a child right now. Agnes, what the? She just, Agnes, <laughs> Agnes just erased her mom's memory of her, completely reset her. They don't know each other. They have a difficult dynamic. Oh my God, Agnes is turning into a villain. <laughs> and here we all thought it was going to be a meese. It's Agnes. She is at her absolute limit. Oh my God. Oh, that's, that's not good, Agnes. She did it in front of her siblings too. And she just, she completely erased her mom's memory using her alien abilities. That's such a breach of trust. Oh my goodness. Honestly, it could be payback because if we remember, Annabelle did the exact same thing to Grogo when they first met, like completely reset his mind in the way he thought of her. And now her own daughter that she made from said relationship that she somewhat manipulated did the same thing to her. I think Agnes is really trying to separate herself from her family, starting with her mother, who was the one who calls on her the most. I don't know. It seems like she's she's really going off the deep end now. She is just she needs to leave. She needs to leave this house for everyone else's safety cuz clearly she's beginning to use her abilities in an unsavory way. And I, I don't I don't know. She's starting to use her abilities in ways that's just frowned upon to use, especially for your, with your family. That's just not right. God, Arya came to visit and Agnes and her, I don't know what happened, but she and her, she and, she and Arya now despise each other. No clue where this conversation went, how it turned out. Well, like, I don't know, but clearly it didn't go well. Of course, this is not a UDC episode without a birthday. And it is actually Catherine and David's birthday today. They're aging up into children so we want to avoid the numbers god you would think i numbers 9 and 19 i knew it and i still i doubted myself which i never should have did so let me get my d20 out because it actually wasn't even out all right so let's roll for Catherine first she got a six so she survives and david got a 12 so he survives okay oh this is super cute now before i jump into their creator sim video um, I do have a little bit of a special announcement. So we are nearing the end of the 1300s, as we all know, and there is actually only one last major event for this century. Every other one last major like role events that I have to do for this century. Everything else would be like family stuff. But the next episode um, not the side household update, that's next, but the, the next actual episode, year 1381, is actually the Peasants Revolt. And I haven't brought this up because I wanted to see where my households and stuff would be before I talked about this. But essentially for the Peasants Revolt, I have to pick one side household family that I get to choose. Um, and they are going to be rebels. Now, that side household family that I choose, every person in that household who is a teen through elder will be tracked down and executed, leaving the children as orphans. Now, I have a, quite a few side households, but I only have two played side households. Whoa, that's not a word. <laughs> I only have two played side households, being Denise's household with her three kids and the random toddler, plus every other adult in the household. And um, I have Amisa's household with her army of children and her in-laws, right? 
Now, here's the thing. I'm going to allow you all to choose and you have a bit more time between this one and the side household update. I'm going to give the same information, the same spiel in the side household update just in case someone missed it. But essentially, um, I don't want to pick who I want to die. So I'm going to kind of give you guys two options that I was thinking of. One, um, would you guys rather I stick with only picking from the blade size side household out well <laughs> would you guys might rather i stick with the currently played side households being denise and amisa's household and just flip a coin because there's only two of them flip a coin to see which household um turn into rebels or would you rather i make a wheel because we have a lot of npc side households as well and we're pretty attached to them considering we, we give five-year updates right or would you prefer that i make a wheel of every single household including amisa and denise's but as well as including all of my individual side households that i no longer play you know a slacks family joan and her kids Thelka, like every single actual household make a wheel and then spin the wheel to see which household um disappears right now because that's way more households and that's kind of cheaty i would spin the wheel two times so we would lose two households and you know it would still give us a chance of potentially losing a Mies and denise's household as well so i'm not completely taking them out of the running but i'm giving them a bit of a fighting chance but i don't want to make that decision on my own I want you guys to tell me what you think and which one you would like to see. Um, both of which would be really dramatic. I think it'd be pretty dramatic to lose some of the side households we rarely see anyways. And I think it'd be pretty dramatic to flip a coin for a me slash Denise. So the year 18, nope, that 18 is really far off, but the year 1381, that episode will be out around this time next week. So... You have quite a while and the side household update will be monday hopefully tuesday at the latest so you guys let me know what you think i'm gonna give the same spiel in the side household update um yes yeah, so i'll be looking at the comments of those two videos to see which one is the best option maybe i'll make a community poll who knows but with that all said and done um I'm just going to put up pictures of the twins' makeover because I'm going to do it off screen. I have to wake up pretty early in the morning to do something. So, yes. So, thank you all so much for watching. If you like this video, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Let me know your thoughts in, in the comments down below. And I'll see you all in the next one. Bye.